What's going on guys? Welcome back to us really part two of my V Rising best PV loadout videos. Now last week we covered my favorite build, the Chaos Spell Slinger. But today we're going to talk about what's basically its polar opposite. This is an unholy build that my friend Bespera and I tweaked together and he uses on our server as his primary class. Now this build is all about melee damage and summoning huge amounts of undead to fight alongside us and take some of the heat off of us by pulling aggro away from us. And by the way, I loved all the comments about the illusion builds in the last video, so that was great to see. That was definitely a class I didn't experiment enough with as I was leveling through the game. Now, without further ado, let's get into this build. Alright, now let's get the easy one out of the way. We're using the Veil of Bones dash ability. This is a quick way to get Condemned going and start to really build up that skeleton army that we need for survivability. Now here's the jewels that I think you should be going for once you start min-maxing this build. The first highlighted one here is key. Dashing through your minions will heal them up, but also reset their lifetime. Keeping your minions healthy enough is key for this build here. After that, we've got the elude duration boost. Our next primary attack after dashing will deal bonus damage, which is great for a melee build. And lastly, we have this unique ability to summon a skeleton mage instead of a warrior, which is a real nice thing for a little extra damage for our minions. We don't really need this first dash ability, as most of the time we'll be dashing away from danger. And my testing it necessarily wasn't towards the boss most of the time. Second up, we had a lot of back and forth over this next one. Bone Explosion versus Corrupted Skull in the tier 1 slot. The tiebreaker for me was the dual possible rolls, so we ended up going with Bone Explosion. Now for this one, since we have so many possible rolls, I just wanted to highlight three, and the fourth one is up to you. Again, we have the option to heal the rest of our skeletons with this first ability, so we want to get that one going from a second source. Next up, of course, we want the damage boost. And lastly, I really like the second ability dealing up to half the original damage with a second explosion. I tried the Nova projectiles above this, but uh, I was kind of underwhelmed by it personally. But besides that one, heck, almost all of these in the fourth abilities would be good to have. And it makes it easier in your stash when you're crafting these gems, just trying to get the perfect rolls. For our second tier two ability, we want the Death Knight. When we summon this guy, we can just set him and forget him. He's going to also help us inflict Condemn and pull some aggro off of us so we can get in or do our thing. Now with the jewels, we want this first ability to summon a Skeleton Mage when he expires to keep our minion count as high as possible. I found that the healing from the Death Knight wasn't really needed, so we skipped that one for extra damage, duration, and max health so we can get the most out of this minion while he's around doing his thing. Lastly, for our ult, we want the Army of the Damned Tier 3 ability. Now this is going to summon 5 warriors and 3 mages for a total of 8 minions, as well as inflicting Condemned on nearby enemies. And with all of our resetting abilities, these guys can stick around for quite a while. The name of the game here is to get as much damage in while these guys are distracting the enemies and taking damage for us. Normally these guys only last for about 8 seconds, but with the Veil of Bones dashing through them or using Bone Explosion near them, we're going to reset that cooldown for up to 6 seconds each time. You know, as long as they don't add a common damage before then. Now for our primary melee weapon, we really have one solid option. The Mortira's Lament, Reaper slash Scythe. This weapon has a quick attack speed and two abilities that synergize well with our build. The Howling Reaper skill inflicts Condemn on hit, and has a 25% chance to summon a Skeleton Warrior for free. The Tendon Swing ability allows us to consume up to 3 Skeletons we have out, and heals for 50% of our total spell power, and increase our outgoing damage for 10% per Skeleton consumed for 8 seconds. A 30% damage boost on top of healing is nothing to scoff at, this is actually pretty good. If you don't have the Legendary version yet, I would just recommend using the blue or purple versions until you can get your hands on this one. For the Amulet, we actually had a lot of discussion on this one. I actually originally wanted to go for the Shock Amulet for the increased attack speed, since we're primarily a melee build. But the movement speed isn't terrible on the Amulet of Unyielding Charger. I'm sure you can think of a time when you were trying to dodge a boss's attack, but your veil was on cooldown, and you just barely got hit just trying to side strafe. Well, movement speed will help out with that for sure. And this one does spawn additional Skeleton Warrior every 10 seconds, so, you know, so, you know this one does have a high synergy. Now for the armor set, we want Shadow Armor for the boost of physical critical strike damage, primary attack life leech, and more physical strike chance and movement after a veil. This is the perfect armor set for what we're trying to do here. If you don't have access to the shadow armor set yet, the tier 6 blood hunter armor is my recommendation until you can get the tier 8 9 armor for endgame. The only potion you really need here is the potion of rage. This one increases our attack power by 6. Since our death knight and army of the undead ultimate don't really deal damage with spell power, it's not as important to boost that one for just bone explosion. And lastly, for our preferred blood type, you want to keep Rogue's Blood handy. This one boots our critical strike chance, movement speed, veil cooldown rate, and attack bonus after a veil. And perhaps most importantly, the chance to expose armor on an enemy, boosting the damage we deal for our skeleton armies by 15%. This blood was really made for this playstyle. 
All right, that should just about do it for this Unholy Skeleton Army build. I'll leave you guys on this 90-second Solaris kill so you can see it in action. And hey, if anybody has a good Frost or Lightning build, let me know in the comments. I'm not seeing enough love for those builds. I would love to see what you guys have cooking. All right, subscribe if you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I feel stronger.